For example, you know, in the uh, early centuries of the church, there was a, a group called the Parabolani, a word that means roughly risk taker. Risk taker. And referred to people who in the third and fifth centuries were putting themselves at risk by taking care of other people who were sick. This, is, uh, this was well before uh, modern science had any sense of transmission of deadly diseases. These people were called risk takers. And remember, at that time, in the third and fifth century, plagues could go through Europe, could go through the world. People didn't have any understanding of what was going on. The Parabolani were people who would stay behind in the towns as people would leave. They would stay there to take care of the sick. Very noble, very compassionate, very loving. Their decision to put themselves at risk for the sake of others is really an understanding of love. The power of Milani. We see that today in places uh, that are committed to serving people with AIDS. People with AIDS, many of us try to avoid. We, you know, even though it's now been a few decades, a couple decades uh, of awareness of AIDS. There's still a stigma there. We still have a certain fear. I remember when AIDS first uh, started hitting the media, and uh, there was a great fear of people who had AIDS. You didn't know how this thing was transmitted. Uh, I mean, just by touching the same kind of interwear that they had used to touch. Our belonging today would be people who, who put themselves there in the presence of such people. Every kind of boy, compassion, loving service, but far along. So that's what uh, love is. And we would bring that to our own faith life as, as uh, uh, well, people of faith. And we think of the scripture passages such as uh, John 3, you know, where uh, God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son. If you believe in him, you will be saved. God loved us so much. I say, to be a more belonging, a risk taker, taking the chance to be in our place where we are, to give an hour of each other, where we are, in order to bring healing. So, I love you. I'm convinced it's an important part of understanding the Christian uh, spiritual life. And I'll bring that to land in a short, short bit. The other uh, the second sentence that was uh, put in that survey that you would most like to hear is, you are forgiven. So another question, what does it mean to forgive another person? What, what's your understanding of what it means to forgive? What does it mean to forgive a debt, forgive a loan? without payment. That's my understanding of forgiveness. So, yeah, it's to act as if maybe we forgot, but you know, it's hard for us to forget to be slighted, to be hurt, especially in a deep way. What you forgive is to erase any debt that you might feel that person owes you. And Shakespeare would say, it was the Merchant of Venice, a pound of flesh. Okay. You are not going to exact retribution, Take revenge or make an attempt to get even. If you did, what the cycle of violence starts to, to, uh, to develop. Forgiveness cuts that cycle of violence so that peace can reign. Jesus forgiving us, or we forgiving other people, allows that cycle of violence of getting even back and forth to develop and really to get out of hand. To forgive is to let go of the pain. What she did was wrong. I'm not going to say that it's okay, no. but we're going to end this right here. I am not going to expect anything from you in return. There's uh, two stories I would tell that I, I, I find meaningful in understanding forgiveness. One is of a Franciscan priest, a Carmelite priest, I'm sorry, named Titus Bransma. Uh, in 1942, he was, he was a Dutchman, and uh, in Holland, of course, at the time, the uh, uh, 
Nazis were uh, occupying Holland. And Titus Brands met with Gull to warn journalists not to publish press releases submitted by the Nazis. So he was arrested, sent to Dachau concentration camp, and he was executed six months later. He was executed by a lethal injection. And there was a nurse who gave him that injection. And as she was preparing him to die, for that injection, that would kill him, he forgave her, gave her his rosary, and then she, of course, uh, injected the drug in him that, that killed her. But in time, her heart was greatly changed. Here was someone she'd done such evil to, taking his life, forgave her, and gave her his rosary. He was saying, he, you know, if he could, he would not take any uh, action against her. But deeply touched her. She started telling that story of what took place there when he was on that gurney. And that bed strapped down. She started talking about it, knowing that it put her at the risk of being tried as a war criminal. And so his story got out, though. In time, in 1985, he was beatified there in Rome, and she, that nurse, was a special guest of honor at his beatification. He chose to forgive her, not to swear at her or whatever one, one might do, curse them, nothing. Also, another story is that of a sister, Katie O'Toole, who I think her story ought to be told more. In 1990, she was in a hospital in Halifax, uh, Nova Scotia, the province of Canada. Sister Katie is a sister of charity in Halifax. She was there, and a physician gave her the wrong injection. The physician quickly realized the mistake and that the injection would be lethal. Horrified, told Sister Katie what had just taken place. She forgave him and told him not to allow this mistake discourage him from the medical vocation. She also quickly forbade her relatives and members of her religious community from suing him for the hospital. And then she died. It's a great example of forgiveness and reconciliation. You are forgiven. I will not seek any kind of retribution. I will not try to cause you are because of what you have done. You are forgiven. Also, there's a story of, uh, uh, regarding Timothy McVeigh. For Timothy McVeigh, okay, longer there in uh, Oklahoma. He uh, was sent to prison, of course, and Father Charles Smith would regularly visit Father Charles Smith as African American. And initially, McVeigh would throw his uh, feces at him. He wanted nothing to do with him. McVeigh was racist. Eventually, Father Charles broke through that and was there with him as he, uh, when McVeigh was taken away for execution. And he realized that during that time, there was a woman who was also visiting him and assumed that that woman was maybe McVeigh's mother. Yep. It was the mother of one of the people who was killed. She is forgiving today, and to him, thank uh, the priest for visiting who, for this priest, ultimately helped uh, McVeigh to seek reconciliation with God.